This is viewport. This is where you can see all the 3D elements of the game, or actually the map. This is explorer. This is where all the services are stored, and more on that later. And this is of course properties, as you can see here. And it's basically just the settings of each thing inside of the game. So each service has its own properties, and if we open up the workspace, which is just this 3D uh, like universe, and for example we take the base plate, which is this huge part, or even spawn location, which is this, and go to the properties, you can see that we can change materials, colors, if it casts a shadow, transparency, reflectance, size, positioning, and all of that. Now to go back to the uh, services and to explain a bit what they actually do, workspace is, as I said before, the whole like 3D universe. The players is just where the players will be stored when the game starts. The lighting is, well, it says for itself lighting, so you can actually change, for example, outdoor ambient or something. Okay, you can't actually see it now because we don't have any buildings, but for example, something like brightness, if I make it to 10, you can see that it's really bright now. Or you can even like change the colors and you can see the base plate then changing. Now a note before we actually continue, I've made on a lot of things, I will be explaining now uh, videos that go more into detail. So if you want to learn more about something that I won't go into detail, there's a high chance I have already made a video on it, so just go on my channel and you can find it. Material service is for importing custom materials, so if you take a base plate you have this material variant and if you import it you can then change it down here. Replicate it first, you won't use this very often, especially as a beginner, but when you use it, it will most likely be for loading screens and stuff like that. So if you insert a script inside of this, that script will load first inside the whole game. Then we have replicated storage, which is again a storage space, but it's shared. It's shared between the server and the client. So both server and the client can actually access it, which is quite different from the server storage, which is accessible only to the server. Here we have server script service, and I have a script inside, which is actually empty, I didn't write anything yet. And inside the server script service is where most of your scripting work will be going. So the most common thing to insert inside the server script service is of course the normal script. You can also insert module scripts. And I know if you're a new developer, these might seem quite confusing, like what even is this? But basically module scripts are used for object oriented programming or for things that need to happen quite often. So for example, I don't know, if we have uh, some sort of a game where there are cars driving and you need to spawn car NPCs, then you will create a module script with a function that will spawn one car. And then you can just do a while loop or a for loop, and then you can spawn infinite amount of cars for just one function. Module scripts can be stored anywhere and used by any of the scripts. And one other uh, script is only a local one. So these are three main things we have, script, or actually server script if you want it, local script and module script. Local script, of course, can only be used by a client, and server script, well, they can actually be used by a client in the server, but it's kind of a complicated relationship depending on what you exactly need. Anyways, now that we are done with that, I will delete them. Now we have the starter GUI, and this is actually the 2D menus you see in all of the games, so if I insert a screen GUI, and you do that by clicking on this plus, you can even search for anything you want, for example, if I need a module script, I can search for it. So let's insert a screen GUI, and here you can see that nothing actually spawned, but this is kind of just a container, so it doesn't actually make anything visible, uh, so you actually need to insert the frames themselves inside of it. So here we have a frame, it's pretty basic. You can also insert like buttons and stuff like that. Again, if you want to go more into detail on how screen joys work, I have a separate videos on that, so you can go watch those. Now the starter pack. This is mostly used for the tools, or a script that is somehow connected to the tools, for example, a fighting mechanic or something similar. So what is actually a tool? Well, if I click the plus button again, and here we have it at the top, tool. A tool is basically, well, literally what it said it is, it's like a sword or a hammer or anything the players can equip as an item. Again, I have a separate video on that, so you can go watch that too. Now the starter player, this is where basically most of your scripts that are local will be going into. So you have either starter character scripts, which is used mostly for like animations and stuff like that, and more things that will convert into the physical form, and the starter player scripts, that is more used to like bind the keybinds and stuff like that. And then now we have teams. Uh, this will be probably only used if your game actually needs teams. So for example, if it's a team versus team shooter or something similar like that. So basically you can just click A plus and then insert a new team. 
each team needs to have a different color so you have quite a lot of colors to choose from and then you can of course rename it again you won't really use this that much unless your game actually has teams and even then you'll probably need to just create a simple team system for switching teams and something like that and then that's it then we have the sound service I haven't actually used this uh, quite a lot like maybe only once for a horror game but basically you can like insert sounds or sound groups that will need to be played during the game this might be good if you want to have like custom walking sounds or maybe even a soundtrack for your game or something like that then we have the text chat service i don't actually touch this ever uh, this is more like if you're actually uh, good at this so, or if you want to have like a quite different chat so you can actually change the fonts of the chat you can change the background color transparency and stuff like that you have other configurations depending on which part of the the actual chat box you want to change then the last thing we have a voice chat service which is actually used uh, just for the new feature that is voice chat and to be quite honest with you i never actually use this or touch it so I won't really be explaining to you what it actually does, but I assume you can just change things about voice chat, that's pretty simple. Okay, so now moving on to the more important things, as this video is getting long enough as it is. The next thing we have is this upper tab. So as you can see, currently I have the home tab selected. So in here you have like select, move, scale and rotate. You can also spawn a part. So if I click on this and you can even like choose the shape of the part. So you have block, sphere, wedge, corner wedge and cylinder. You can move between these four with your keyboard. So one, two, three and four. And I think they're quite self-explanatory. So scale, you can literally just uh, scale things. Move, you can move them around and select is basically like moving, but just with your mouse and rotate, of course, is the rotating. Now, a few tricks I wish I knew when I just started out with the Roblox Studio is, for example, if I scale it, uh, something like this, but then I want it to scale, like, the whole thing, not just, like, go up, you, what you can do is uh, do Control G, or uh, you can right-click on this part and then group as a model, or you can even just right-click uh, in it inside the viewport and then group as a model, and then you can literally just drag the scaling and it will scale it in all directions so i will ungroup it now and change it back to be a smaller block and one another thing uh, that's very important so if we go to the model tab you have this thing inside of the block that's like in the middle as it is by default and that's the pivot if i select this pivot thing you can actually change it and move it and why that is useful is because for example if i put it up here you can see that now it will rotate this way around that pivot and you can also change it by the numbers if you select the part and go to its properties and you can see the position down here and now one very important thing that i somehow missed to showcase to you is how do you actually turn these things on so for example if you don't have this tab or the explorer tab or the properties or even the output so first of all if you don't have this upper tab it's probably because of this arrow here so it might be closed off like this but then even so if you just click on any of these things they will open up and this arrow uh, it just depends if it's permanent or, the, or not so inside of this view tab you have it literally right here you can turn on the explorer as you can see and the properties and the output and also the command bar which is a bit of a scripting i guess but if for example you want um, to follow the new trend that the games have like stud textures and them then you can literally just do instance and you can click tab to automatically fill out uh, whatever it is that it's written here so you can see like new i can just click tab on my keyboard and it will fill it out you do quotation marks and then part and then uh, go to the right comma and then you can put workspace then tab again and this will basically when i run this command it will insert a new part inside of the workspace oh okay is it where it is okay it's inside of the middle okay so you can now see that this part actually has studs on it that's because when you insert it this way you can actually get the surface property so basically you can choose like from all of these things so motor hinge glue or whatever it is that you want and normal parts for some reason don't have this so like as you can see tags is down here and assembly up here and inside these parts when you insert it like this there is a surface property in between those two okay so the next thing you will go to the model tab uh, so we can actually change some uh, things regarding the movement and the rotation of the part itself you can see here that you have a rotate move and snap to parts so if i duplicate this part and i have the snap to parts turned on when i start to drag it you can see these little dots come up here and up here and if i drag it a bit close 
it will automatically snap so they perfectly collide at the surfaces. So with that being turned on, you will never need to manually like align the surfaces perfectly. It will just do it for you. Then another thing, if you have a move selected, you can actually change by uh, the studs that is moving. So for example, one studs it will move like this. As you can see, it's kind of large. And if I put it up to 10, you can see it's moving even more. And if you still want to have this turned on, but you need to like move it slightly, you can just use shift by holding it down and then you can move it with no grid. And same goes with the rotate. It's set to five degrees for me. So you can see these like little degrees. And if I hold down shift, I can turn it however I want. Now, another very important thing to know is that your parts need to actually be anchored. So for example, uh, if I play now the game, so if you go to the home tab back, and we have this like plating but if you click down on this you can either like play it and it will spawn your character right here at the spawn or in the middle if there is no spawn or you can do play here which will completely ignore all the spawns at least you have like a custom script that will spawn you and then it will literally like spawn you right here where your camera is or you can just do run which won't spawn you at all but it will just run the game and you will still be able to see everything Okay, so you can see that the part has just fallen on the floor because it wasn't anchored. So if I select the part, I can either anchor it up here or I can go to its properties and then click anchored. And when we run the game, the part will stay afloat. And of course, you can actually click stop right here to stop the like simulation. And uh, this is actually not an option right now because we are running it only on the server side. But for example, let's say I'm actually playing the game. So I'm right here. This is my character. And if I click on this current client, it will actually switch it to the server side. So I'm not actually in control of my character anymore, but rather of the server. So that's just uh, very useful for like testing things inside of your game. Now going back to the model, and I know I'm kind of switching up between uh, all of these tiles, but it's just kind of what's the most primary thing for you guys to learn. So if I select this part, and let's actually duplicate it, and okay, I will turn this on because it's kind of annoying, and let's say uh i don't know we'll rotate it like this and now i will actually show you how to uh, do solid modeling so if i uh, select both of these parts and then i click on the union they will become one thing and one thing you probably already noticed is the texturing of the studs has been removed but that's just the way it is now if you have a union like this so this is now one whole model or actually not model but a part or a union that is if you want to separate it, you can just click on the separate and you can see that the texturing is back. But let's say we want to create a hole inside of this other part. We will select this one and then we'll do negate. I will drag it inside of this. And then when I select this one as well and the union it, there will remain a hole in the shape of the part where that was negated. Now, of course, you can uh, separate it. And if you want to make this part come back to the normal part, you can either click on the gate or on just the separate. Now, uh, Roblox actually added a new thing which is called intersect. So if I select both of these and then click intersect, it will actually leave only a part where uh, those two are actually going through each other. Okay, so that's basically unioning and negating and separating and intersecting or actually as one thing solid modeling as they like to call it for you. Now the next thing we have is the avatar tab. Uh, this is just like for animating and inserting rigs. So if you click this uh, rig builder, you can like choose R15 or R6, masculine and feminine, and then you can insert a part. And if you watched me before, you know that I always like insert uh, R6 rig. That's like blocky because this is kind of the most popular uh, Roblox rig. But yeah, if you want to know more about the animating and how to actually use this animation editor, I have uh, loads of videos where I use this, so you can just go watch those. Then we have test and let, let me just actually bring this down. Uh, this is actually a very important tab where you're creating uh, GUIs. So back to this start GUI thing that I mentioned earlier. If I click plus again and then insert a new screen GUI and we get a new frame. And let me just color this become really bright. So for example, I don't know, darker green. Yeah, it's kind of ugly actually, but whatever. It will do for now. And we go to the test tab. And now I click on this device thing. You can see that it's not really sized properly. It's kind of not in the middle where it was when it was like this. And when I go to this device again and you, up here, you can actually change uh, which device it's on. So you can see that, for example, on this iPhone, it's actually going off screen, which we don't really want. So let's turn this device thing off. And why this is happening is because uh, the 
size is set to offset and not scale. So go to the properties again, uh, we have the size thing. So by having the frame uh, selected, you will have this size thing. And then if we open it up, as you can see, it's both set to the offset. And now you can either like input it manually like this, zero to zero. And then I don't know, uh, scale 0.3, 0.3. Okay, so it's not actually the perfect size, but it doesn't really matter for now. And now when I click on the device again, and we can change it to back to the, what was that, iPhone 6 or something like that. As you can see, it's scaling down depending on which device you are on. And now you can either do it that way, or uh, one more uh, way cooler way that I actually use is plugins. So as you can see, I have a lot of plugins here, and not to confuse you, you don't actually need uh, all of them on your day-to-day -day basis on using the Roblox Studio. So don't worry, I will probably use maybe, I don't know, one or two if you're working on a game daily. But uh, the plugins are actually so useful because uh, Roblox Studio doesn't by default have some useful stuff. So for example, uh, this auto scale light, which I again have a separate video on, but I will showcase it still here. So uh, if I, let's actually insert a new, so I don't need to type this. Um, so this is a new frame again. And uh, if we go to the size, you can see that it's uh, back to the offset, uh, which again is not really that good because then you can scale it on all, all of the devices. And I can uh, set the position to the scale, which already is, and also the size, and you can see that it switches, but of course it stays the same size as it was before. So yeah, basically you can use uh, loads of plugins. I have uh, even a video where I like rate them. So if you want to know which ones are the best, you can go watch that after like the three videos I already mentioned. But yeah, with that conclusion, I think we've actually uh, came to kind of an end. Of course, I didn't show any scripting in this video, so it's a bit different than usual. But this is more a like very, very beginner friendly. So just for the people that are like day ones inside the studio, to know uh, what does what and how to move around in the explorer and the properties and all of these tabs so if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like subscribe uh, you can go to my patreon if you want to support me or buy any models that you need and thanks for watching